ties down for the water. Good afternoon people. It's Monday. It's 4.23 and we've got two mud guards which are just about ready for paint but today it's too late because the first job this morning well, the first job at two o'clock when I got here after various trips about sorting this that and the other the first job was to get the heater going because at two o'clock it's not worth lighting the fire but I need heat otherwise I get cold and it's not nice so uh, I stripped the heater and rebuilt it, that's now working beautifully. Uh, that's what happens when you run it on mucky diesel. <laughs> but it works really well. And then I set to with a will and a DA sander and kicked seven bells out of these mud guards. Well as you can see uh, there's a lot of filler on them but it's only to cover the welding. And I've come to the point where I think I'm going to do a bit more to them tomorrow morning then I'm going to stand back and let them have it. I was thinking, I was, I was just wondering whether I should stone chip them or not and then paint over the top of the stone chip. It might be an idea. It might be an idea. Stone chip's like very thick primer. It, uh, it's very good. It gives you a slightly uneven surface and you can put paint on top of it of any sort but it tends to uh, to hide dints and filler and stuff like that much better the only other alternative is to prime it and prime it and prime it and prime it build up a really heavy layer of acrylic primer and then stop for any defects and then paint it finally I don't know I think I'll decide tomorrow, I think I'll decide tomorrow, but I've had enough for today. Uh, I've had enough for today. It's gone well, it's gone alright. I'm pleased. We had to, uh, on this one here, we had to completely put that curve back in because it was missing. Well, I can feel there's a little bit there that I need to do a bit more to, but more or less it's there again and it, it's a lot better than it was. So. Although that bit I'm, that bit I'm bitching about is underneath, you wouldn't see it anyway. But uh, I like to get them, I like to get them as good as I can. But when you've got old metal that's all over the place, unfortunately I'm not Trev of Trev's blog. Trev is brilliant. Trev Trev can, can weld in new metal, dolly it flat with a hammer and dolly, and then and then fill it slightly and paint it and it looks perfect well I'm afraid I'm not Trev sorry Trev but I'm not Trev I'm crap Trev <laughs> there you go this is as good as it gets from me after all it's not a Ferrari right I'll catch you all tomorrow there's the other one bye now that's what I've got done I have been uh, wondering how to paint these they are really really awkward they're also quite heavy so suspending them is a possibility but I can only suspend one at once unless I might have a go tomorrow anyway I've, I've blanked I've, I've blanked out all the uh, sealer that's been put around the uh, round the box sections with red lead I suppose I could suspend one from the hook there and perhaps suspend one from the girder over here just move that stuff so I can get round it that might be the way to go actually they're really awkward they fall over at the slightest hint of a breeze or you knock them and they you know they really need to be what they really need is a plate with four holes in it and then lift them up so you could spin them round but that's not going to happen then I wondered about whether I could bolt them onto the tractor backwards and just 
put a sheet on the tractor. I might do that when I'm actually spraying the blue one, but this is the primer that's going on. I don't want to get primer all, all over what I've already sprayed. They actually do, on this here, which is the tractor wheel, if I put a wood block there and a wood block there and drop them onto the tractor wheel, they're really stable. That's a really good way to do it, but to be honest, I j I j I'm just stuck for a way to paint them. I suppose I could, uh, I could even put them in the vice. Couldn't I put them, put a vice on them? I think what I'll, I think what I'll do, and this is going to be tomorrow now because it's, it's got late. Cause I've had a visitor this afternoon, uh, a real interesting bloke who's just moved to the village and uh, has it came for a natter, and we've had a really good natter. So what I might do tomorrow is move this up there temporarily suspend one on here so I can I can spin it round right and then suspend the other one from here so that because there isn't room here to suspend them both uh, and get in between them I don't think and then we'll get the prime on as you can see I'm ready I've got my gun I've got my primer I've got my uh, hardener I've got my thinners out, but it's uh, it's 20 minutes past four. It's it's too close tonight to do it now, so I'll do it tomorrow. So that's what I'm going to do. So that's what I've got done today, apart from a couple of little repairs on the compressor. I put a new PCL connector on the compressors. I've got two good PCLs on the compressor, and I've got two good airlines that I can use, so I can have this heater going and the compressor as well. I've noticed something really odd. When I light my boiler, when I light my fire and I blow warm air around the uh, around the workshop, it takes maybe an hour before the workshop's comfortably warm. But then it stays warm all day and you can let it go out about half past two, three o'clock and the place just stays warm. Whereas with this it warms it up quickly, but as soon as you as soon as you switch it off, within five or ten minutes it's cold again. Which is, I suppose, really weird. But I suppose this is pulling all the air in from the workshop, because it pulls the air in to there, heats it and blows it back out again. So it's got a constant circulation of warm air. It doesn't get very warm. You know, if I, could, if I get the boiler up to 70 degrees, right, it's warm enough in here. You don't really want it a lot warmer. But this is great for instant heat. Great for instant heat, but it doesn't warm the place somehow. I don't know why. There you go. Right, I'm going to call that it for Tuesday. Tomorrow I've got the EICR at Mother's first thing, but I mean first thing. That's starting at 8 o'clock, so I shall be here about half past 8. And then uh, when that's done, I shall come down to the workshop and crack on. So, I'll see you all tomorrow. That's Tuesday done. Bye now. Good afternoon, folks. Wednesday, 4.30. And we've got wings in primer, or mudguards in primer, whatever you want to call them. And they look pretty damn good. Can't see that side because this light hasn't come back on. But there's a bit of stoppering to do, but not much. And uh, I'm very pleased with the way they look. We got the uh, electrical inspection done at my mum's this morning. It took till lunchtime, but it was done. And then I came round here, tidied up, swept up, put the heating on. And then somebody arrived, and then somebody else arrived. And at half past three... I pushed the last person out the door and started, got on with the painting. So it's done. So tomorrow, when they're dry, I shall put some stopper on them. On the little bits. Just like little bits like that. Can you see that there? Just a slight blemish there. A little bit of a blemish there, but that's underneath a light. Just little, just, just little odd spots that want just a scoop over with some stopper. Just to, just to fill them in and make them look nice. But not much. So, that's it for today. We're here and we're gone. So I'll see you all tomorrow. Bye now. And here we are, folks. 
Thursday. Lunchtime. The stopper's on. There isn't a great deal. The, uh, they've really come out. I'm using, I'm using acrylic primer, which is something I've never used to, you can't see that mate. Something I've never used before, because I've, I've not painted anything for so many years, uh, that I've completely lost touch with the world of automotive and industrial machinery paints. And all my paint suppliers are, are long gone. And so I found one in Scarborough and went to see him. And he said, well, I'll tell you one thing. He said, nobody uses cellulose primer anymore. I said, oh, what do they use? He said, it's acrylic. Acrylic primer. And I've got some stuff called Relacryl, which is a two-pack primer, which you thin, add a hardener, and... Uh, and bang it on and it goes on thick and it goes on lovely and it doesn't run like cellulose used to do and uh, it's just made it, it's covered in a multitude of sins I'm not too bothered about this area down here because that's where the big welded repairs were that's where all the new metals gone in right and to be honest that part of the wing you can't in normal use you can't see it's that part of the wing you see and that's what I'm putting all the effort into. So, as long as it's blue and shiny, that'll do me. This wing is, is come out really well. I'm amazed when you consider that that, that there's new metal in there. Uh, and, and new metal along there, it, you know, there's a lot of new metal. Uh, it's, it's really covered well. So I'm very happy with those. So now they need at least 24 hours for that stopper to go off. Uh, in fact they probably won't get rubbed down until next week now so what I'm going to do next is get on to flatting this filler and preparing these two pieces for uh, primer uh, unfortunately I don't think I've got enough no I haven't got enough I've ordered some more thinners for the primer uh, this is the stuff and it's, uh, I mean, there's, there's quite a few acrylic uh, two-pack primers on the market, but it's bloody good stuff, it's amazing. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do next, get this rubbed down, and I'll bring you back when I've got something interesting to show you. Or is it interesting? I don't know. It might be interesting, it might not be. Bye now. Right, folks, that's all that knocked back, and some more... Rather, my, I should throw my body filler away, really. It's got lumps in it. But uh, if you put it on, you know if it's all right. Uh, I've had to redo these two areas here because that one was low at the bottom. It was fine at the top, low at the bottom. That's a repair. That's around the headlight hole, and it would completely rotted out. All the metal was gone, so I had to put quite a big patch in there. So that's going to get drilled out from the outside before it gets painted. But the rest of it's a little bit on there. The rest of it's fine. Oh, a little bit on there too, that I hadn't filled deep enough. The rest of it's flatted fine. So this is now virtually, uh, virtually ready for primer. But as I said, I've got, I've run out of thinners, so that'll be coming probably early next week. May even get it over the weekend. Uh, so I'll crack on with that then. So what I'm going to do next. Well, actually, what I'm going to do next is pop up to Mudders and reset our central heating, because after the EICR, the timer's out. So, but what I'm going to do next are these bits here. Can you see? Let me just spin round. The uh, the turbo, the turn equipment. I'm going to get these out, clean the crap off them, uh, repair them because they need some welded repairs on them. Uh, where the holes have gone over. Uh, get the repairs done, give them a coat of red lead, show them some blue and get them back on. So that's all the three point linkage parts and the tow bar parts going back on. And then we're beginning to we're beginning to close on the finish. We really are. 
Paint takes time. If you want to get it right, it takes time, especially on rough old metal that's been been hammered about and welded. It does take time to get it right. But I'm very pleased with those wings. They've come out really well, and I think this bonnet and front cowl are going to be good as well. Uh, I'm not going to be too go too mad with the filler. Oh, that one's rubbing off. I'm not going to go too mad with the filler because if you get it flat and the right profile, and then belt it with primer and really prime it and prime it and prime it until you've got a good thickness of primer it'll show up all the imperfections that are important and then you can stop of those right but with if you try to get it perfect with filler you sp in, unless you're an expert at filler which i'm not you spend hours on it so i tend to i tend to get it roughly right with the filler belt primer at it and then when it's dry give it a, a D nib and a D nibbing with a with a maybe a, a 200 pad a 150 or a 200 pad what are these these are what I use they're 180 pads uh, just D nib it with 180s and then you can see any little divots in it and all you do with those is a quick scrape over with stopper and they've gone so uh, that's what I'm going to do with this and it'll look good right i have now to go to mother's and reset her heating so i'll see you all later if i get onto that today i'll bring you back and uh just show you me covered in crap i've always believed that reconditioning or rebuilding any piece of machinery mainly involves moving all the dirt and rust from the machine onto me and that seems to work quite well see you later bye now good morning people friday and it's actually, as usual, afternoon, it's 12.56. And look, some idiots put the mudguards on backwards. But I thought to myself, what better way to paint them than to have them bolted to the vehicle, because then they're absolutely solid and they can't fall over. So what I'm going to do, from here, I can edge them out, get all the edges, spray inside that edge there, Right, and then spray the outsides. This is after it's been the stop has been flattened, which I'm not going to do till Monday. Spray the outside, leave it to dry, and all the edges done. Right, and then take it off, turn it round, put it back on, spray the inside. And that way, all the overspray goes on the tractor. Right, so I should be protecting most of the areas of the tractor. But let's face it, paint is paint. Right, and I'm going to do the same with this side, obviously. So there they are, all bolted on and ready to do on Monday because I wanted my painting bench back to do the uh, the inside of the bonnet with red lead and the inside of the cowl with red lead uh, I've got all the filler knocked down on that that's uh, that's being called finished now and what I'm going to do is get it red leaded now I'm hoping that my, my thinners will come over the weekend for me acrylic paint and then I shall uh, I shall prime it on Monday and uh, and then it'll probably be dry enough on Tuesday to stop her uh, and then we're, we're hurtling towards blue we're hurtling towards blue but I'm going to get all this stripped off now get the bonnet taken into, the, into two pieces again get the handles off which are only on finger tight anyway and then uh, get some red light get the inside cleaned off and get some red lead on it. Okay, I'll bring you back when I've done it. Bye now. Right folks. That's those off. I've got one painted. They're very heavily pitted in the race, but uh, they have been sandblasted so they should be okay. I'll put the other one over, well, maybe put that one over that side now. I'm going to have to spray parts of them because there's areas of the hinge that I just can't get to with a brush, so they're going to have to be sprayed with red lead. But uh, that might get done today. What time is it now? It's 1.35. Well, I'm getting a phone call about 2 o'clock to go and pick the daughter up from school because she's got loads of stuff to bring back. So I might get it done today, I might not. In the meantime, I'm going to crack on with it. The weather here, 
for Mad Friday is not too bad. Uh, it's windy, and we've just had a we've just had a very grey sky with a load of rain, as you can see. But it's uh, the sun's come out again, and it seems to be improving a bit. So there you go. But we are hidden down a little hole in Langton. Look, somebody's even put a wheelie bin out. Look, and it hasn't taken off. All right, catch you later. Bye now. Right, folks. Once again, the party's over. It's Friday night. I've got to go pick Emily up in 10 minutes. And uh, I'm going to have to pack it in. So what I've got done is this. I've got the underside of both these panels coated in the first coat of red lead. They might get another one depending on what it looks like. I've got the hinge there done, sprayed in. I've also got that hinge sprayed in in red lead. So they're ready for the next process now. Uh, they'll want grey primer on the outside plus a bit of stopper. We've got these two bolted on, ready for flatting and painting blue on Monday. And I've made a rubber mount for there. For under there, I've had to join a piece on there because it wasn't quite big enough. That will just lift the cowl so that that hose is not pushed down like it was like that, which I didn't like. So that'll just lift the cowl, right? And it'll also give me more clearance over that, I think. So there we go. So it's coming on a pace now. So Monday, because I haven't time now. Red lead that inside there, where it's been welded, and then spray red lead in there, and then we're ready for grey primer. So it's hope it's to be hoped that my thinness for the grey primer comes over the weekend. I think I've got enough accelerator. Yeah, I've got enough accelerator there. I'll probably get I'll probably get two two guns full out of that. I'll probably need two guns full, I don't know, maybe not. There'll be enough anyway, there'll be enough. So there we go. So, that's it for now. Thank you all for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for, for, for all your comments. And uh, the reason I've been a bit here, there and everywhere over the last two weeks is that my cousin Keith, who has been in my videos, uh, has been ill. He's been in hospital, he went into hospital for a routine operation and uh, went into post-operative shock and has been hovering close to death for about a week. He has recovered. Uh, he's been in intensive care, he's recovered, he's on the mend uh, and he's going to be okay, fingers crossed, we all hope. So that's why I've been a bit all over the place for the last uh, couple of weeks. So thank God he's getting better. Uh, you'll have seen him when we've been doing commando gardening up at the field because he lives on the edge of the field and I own half the field with him. So I'm glad that he's recovering. Right folks, thank you all for watching and I'll see you all next week. Bye now.